that was is created out of a fund. We actually are a, it's, it's kind of an interesting situation because it's also a foundation. So it's the Timothy Smith Foundation that funds the Timothy Smith Network. The Timothy Smith Network is committed to closing the digital divide by providing uh, pathways, opportunities, opening up doors to higher education and job and career opportunities in the tech field. We understand that uh, black are severely blacks and other so-called minorities, because we know they're not a minority, but black, Latinx, women, particularly black women, are very underrepresented in the tech field. So we provide opportunities for people to get tech access and tech education. The primary way that we do that is through what we call the Timothy Smith Technology Labs. They are located in a series of uh, community-based organizations throughout primarily Roxbury, a little bit to the south end. And these organizations, they house Timothy Smith Labs, and they prevent, they present programs that are sort of in tune with what they do. The idea was to put the, the, the labs into the community, into organizations, who would then be able to provide programming that is relevant to the people who come to their organization. So, for example, we have uh, we have a lab at Spokey Hill. We have one at Roxbury Community College. We have one at the Elder Services Coalition. We have one, uh, you know, the, the lab that Bell King runs. That's ours. We have one at By Street. We have one at uh, Catherine Dexter. Uh, so we have quite a few, I think 20 for a total lab. Wow. wow. And they're sitting there with state-of-the-art technology. We, ha- they are, through us, these labs get uh, state-of-the-art print, uh, computers that are updated every two years or so, every two or three years. They get state-of-the-art computers, 3D printers, scatters, uh, uh, they get, uh, which would cameras, they do, they get everything that they need to provide training and access to tech for people in the community so they can learn about tech. Wow, wow. You, you know, Andrea, um, we had, I had a non-profit organization called Bruce Wall Ministries, and we started it in 1988, and we did it for about 18 years or so. And the focus in 1988 was to work with young people in the streets of Boston who were struggling, being uh, joining gangs, those who were being shot. And we started a ministry at the Shafu Roller Skating Rink where we dealt with a lot of the young people. When we moved the ministry to the church, we set up a computer lab and we had uh, where the radio station is now that used to be our computer lab in the entire downtown da- downstairs area of the church and we had students from MIT and Northeastern who were coming in weekly and training hundreds of people and people were walking out of here Microsoft certified and they were learning how to design web pages and so it sounds like the journey uh, that you're on and what the Timothy Smith Network is similar to, but more advanced than what we, we started in 1988. I'm excited to hear that. Well, you know, to me, you guys are very progressive. Timothy Smith, we didn't just did not start until 1996. So you were really uh, ahead of your time, actually. And that's exactly what we're talking about in terms of becoming Microsoft certified. Uh, the goal is for people to walk out of there with skills that can support them in getting the jobs that are out here. And, you know, it's so interesting because working with them, one of the things I've learned is that everything is tech. You know, we think tech jobs, like Microsoft certified, you need to be that, or you need to uh, be able to work with virtual reality, yeah. or you need, you know, we, we look at tech in that way. But actually, oops, I just had a little accident here. <laughs> tech is actually everything. Yes. If you want a job at Walmart, you have to know how to use those scanners. Yes. 
and those computers there. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, somebody would say that even if you were like a security guard, nowadays they the, the uh, security guards have to use certain kinds of uh, detection instruments that allows the people who, you know, where they're employed to know where they are. Mm-hmm. So they have to check in via these instruments, these tools, so that people can keep track of where, that you're actually there where you say you are patrolling the ground. Wow. And wow. so it's an electronic computerized device. Correct. So wow. it's like there's no place really where tech is not important. If you can't send an email or anything like that, then you're in trouble. Yeah, well, one of the things that, that we'll, we'll talk about in the coming weeks, um, w- one of the things that we did here uh, a number of years ago during the summer, we brought in eight teenagers. The city paid for four of them. And Citizens Bank paid for the other four. And they were with us for for eight weeks. And they came in at 8.30 in the morning. And we did four of the weeks at BNN. And we signed a contract with them. And they taught them video editing and using cameras. Then they came with us and we taught them audio. And, and they had their own radio broadcast here every single day for eight weeks. It was a phenomenal time and we took the young people to various radio and tv stations to expose them we couldn't continue that program because the funding wasn't there and i couldn't hire the staff to do it but we have set up another room um a dining room downstairs with um, eight computers macs and pcs and i'm getting ready to start to teach people how to edit their own broadcast because it's too much for me to do. So we need to talk down the line about some type of a partnership because we, the fact that we have this radio, TV, social media thing going on here, uh, when we get into this, it is growing so exponentially. I, I, I can't even keep up with the growth, and we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. So, so, so this, this high-tech focus that you have, recognizing that Amazon.com wanted to come and establish the headquarters, possibly in Boston, although we were not one of the major cities. They're still here. Um, The people who make the software for our television, I found out that they were in Westwood. So there are jobs, and the high-tech community has found Boston. And and as you're saying, if people aren't moving into, into these industries, they're not going to make enough resources to even purchase and own houses in this town. Well, you know, it's, I heard a frightening statistic. They said that, yeah, you know, I've been hearing it uh, a couple of places, so I guess it's pretty much what the, the industry is expecting. I've heard that it's estimated that in between 50 to 20 years, 40% of the jobs that we now have will be gone. Yeah. Because of automation. Mm. So that means right now people have to be redirecting their skill set toward an automated, digital, highly technical society. And I'm not saying to ignore other aspects of self, because we can't give ourselves over completely to this tech thing and go crazy with it. But we have to be aware that this is where we're heading. And we have to create those opportunities for people to be able to compete for those jobs. You know, I was listening to uh, the program yesterday, uh, BG Second uh, uh, Show, where they were, I think John Barris was on, right? Yes, yes. And they were talking about no matter what happens in the general population, un- unemployment extremely low. Here we are in the, our community with two or t- three times the rate of their unemployment, of the general public unemployment rate, uh, yeah. you know? Yeah. And a lot of people don't have access to this technology. I, there was a report that was put out by, the, I think it was the Urban League in 2018, and what it said was like one, fully one-third of black families, households, low-income households do not have access to technology in the home, to the computers, or to the internet. So right there, the kids are behind. Wow, wow, wow. I, 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 
have told a story about a group of people who were tourists and they went to I think it was Central America and they while they were there they were on some island and their uh, it looked like they had renovated all of the buildings except for one Andrea just one building had not been renovated and the one building that had not been renovated was um, filled with bullet holes and so the one of the tourists asked the tourist guide what this 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 island looks great but that building's an I saw you've got bullet holes all in the building why didn't you renovate that one building and the tour guy said that used to be the radio station and during the crisis and the revolution that they had in this country the radio station was the only entity that communicated the information to the people that kept the revolution going it kept those who were fighting uh, for the righteous cause they won and when I heard that story about the power of radio and TV in the right hands with the right people what we could do I was committed to saying we're going to grow this thing and go to places that I never thought we could go and it's happening it is really happening and the fact and the fact that your organization has has uh, recommended us to be cited for what we're doing um, has really blessed us because it's like we have our head down and we keep moving to take the hill we're not looking to our left to our right yeah. but other people are looking and other people are watching and I think one of the, when you were here broadcasting with with BG uh, months ago um, we were just beginning to climb as it relates to how many networks have picked up our feed. We're up to over 40 networks that have picked up our media feed now wow. and are airing us around the world. So um, I am very excited to, to know that you're working with this organization, number one. And number two, the possibility of connecting with your organization and utilizing what we have to train people in the high-tech area, but in, in the area of social media. I, I call social media and Internet are not the same things. They're separate, and people do not understand that. TV and radio, those four entities coming together, I don't even see white media organizations in this town doing all four yet. So God has moved us to the head of the curve, and you're affirming by recognizing us that you also see it. Oh yeah. Well, um, I, you know, I, I, I wish I could say, oh boy, let us collaborate together. I want to do something with you. I think I recommended that to Milton Irving, who's the executive director of Timothy Swift Network. I, you know, I read your bio and we talked a little bit last week. I was like, we really should be doing something with them. So I hope that works out because. We're mission aligned. We're definitely mission aligned. And I think that we could create some powerful things in this community for getting information, for yeah. training people, for teaching people, for just creating knowledge. Right. Because that's so important. It's so important to know what is really happening or have some sense of what is really happening. Uh, and I told them what I was talking about, dominating you, for this award, I, mean, I guess we probably need to, to explain what we're talking about, the award, but before I explain that, I, I just said that what I love about the Boston Praise Radio and TV network is that, yes, you are Christian-based, but you are also, with that Christian base, you are very invested in being a social agent for change mm -hmm. and transformation. Mm -hmm for social justice. And that's so important. The story that you just told sort of reflects exactly what the, the sentiment was in terms of our decision to give you this award because keeping lines of communication open, providing information that is fact-based, that's truth-based, or whatever, at least intentionally anyway, is so important. Without that, you just get, you fall prey to the media that is just trying to deceive us and bring people of color down and bring women down and keep the power structure the way it is. 
So I definitely see that we are mission aligned, and I hope that we can make some uh, some connections. Well, well, the the, the other the other the other thing is, I could see the your organization actually, in addition to being at different locations and teaching people. Um, right now, I'm getting ready to design a brand new web page for a new a, a new entity. It's going to be called Bruce Wall Media, and it's going to be my own web page, and it's going to be focusing on the television and radio. But we're going to be doing some of the high tech training on the web page. So, and I've been telling a number of people, why not come into the studio? and do your cooking class or do your high tech class or your computer web page designing class and do it here and give people in the community an opportunity they can see it you can do it weekly um, i had a guy that came in with a group of young people and they were these young people were chess champions black young people from boston uh -huh. i said why don't you come in once a month and do a chess game i'll give you a whole hour for free and you do a chess game and just show people how to play this game. So with with a creative with a creating creative thinking cap on, the sky's the limit as to what we can do to inform the community. And let me just give you one last one. Rachel Rollins running for district attorney. I I I we felt here at the station that we had to motivate and push the community to register and vote for the candidate of their choice. Not our candidate, but vote for the candidate of their choice. And a couple people called me on the air and said, you're wasting your time. This, this Suffolk County DA's race has already been decided. The white guy's gonna get it. Uh, he's already been anointed. He has the money, forget about it. And we said, no, we want, we want to push our community to vote for their candidate, whoever it was. And when Rachel, all the candidates, DA candidates, came on the radio station, and when Rachel won, I just applauded the community for not listening to what the media was saying. The white media was saying it's a foregone conclusion. Greg Henning was going to win. Give it up, folk. And we never gave up. And, and that's the power of, of having our own media where we go against the status quo and we help to empower our people. I'm excited about what happened. Yeah, and the same thing with Ayanna Presley. Same like, thing with her, yes. They were like, well, why is she, you know, but it's interesting because I belong to a neighborhood association, and those things are powerful, too. And so um, our association is west of Washington, and I was there when they had Rachel Rollins came one time, and then Ayanna Presley came another time. And I saw those women, and I was like, "These." I mean, I knew Ayanna Presley from before. Right. But I was like, boy, these are some dynamic women. They're, I believe they can take this. Right. I believe they can take this. I really did. So, yeah, it's so important in just so many ways. Communication. I mean, I'm a journalist. I have a journalism background. It's so incredibly important. And the problem that we face in journalism is that we don't know who's telling the truth. <laughs> I, I just really know that whatever we get out of the, the regular media, we don't know what's happening. Right. We don't really know why or how this wall business is going down, yeah. who the real alliances are yeah. with. I mean, it's, just, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. just really almost crazy. But you have to try to get a head on it. And the only way you can do that is by doing what you know to do, which is to broadcast these wonderful shows that inform people and get people active and engaged in their life and interested. Well, and give them a sense of hope. Right, it is. It is hope, and and I I, I want to. I'm going to make one other statement that I want to push you to just talk about the event that's happening on next Saturday. That's why I, when you t asked me the question about how much time we have, um, I want us to just flow because. Um, I, I, I'd rather have us just flow, even if, you know, we go for the full hour, people are listening to us in their automobiles. There are young people in their cars listening, in their family's cars, on their way to school, and people on their way to work who are listening to us. They're at the gym. Um, so I want us to take our time and really un un unpack all of this. Um, I'm very excited because when Channel 4, 5, or 7 come into the black community to cover a story, 
they'll come in and they might talk to people for about an hour and but when they go back to the studio or send the video back it's edited by people who are not here on site uh -huh. and so they got to cut it up and they have their marketing thing and they know what they want to say and how they want to say it and so we might see three minutes of three minutes of what it took an hour or two hours to film and it's from their slant and our community in my opinion is not represented well when we go into a situation like that we'll film for the hour and we'll play exactly what we filmed without editing it okay so it's it, well, this is another way when i listen to news I do not just turn on 457 CNN, uh, MSNBC. I go to the BBC. I go to Africa. I go to other countries and I listen to the news about the United States from their perspective. And when I just the position what they're saying and what we're saying, I sift it and I finally get the truth. Yeah. So let's talk about what's happening on Saturday. Take your time, walk us through it, and, and, and describe it in a way that's going to make people say, you know what, I'm not going to miss that. Go right ahead. Okay, so Saturday, February 23rd, from 1 to 3 p.m., the Timothy Smith Network, in partnership with Freedom House, is sponsoring a Black History Month celebration acknowledging black achievements in technology. What we want to do is just acknowledge that we have been part of the dialogue. We've been part of the process of building this country, and so many people are not aware of that. And so we also want to acknowledge our local uh, tech pioneers, and that includes you. So, on the 23rd, we're going to have from 1 to 3 at Freedom House this ceremony, this event, where we're going to talk about some of the crucial issues of the day in terms of technology, where we're going to have technology demonstrations, and where we're going to just allow people to get a greater sense of the black presence in technology and the need for us to continue on that path. And how can people get into the, to the tech field? What do they need to do in terms of their jobs? You know, in terms of preparing for these tech jobs, their careers, going to school. What is it they need to do to prepare for a changing world in tech? Yeah. And so we are honoring three people who we consider to be Wonderful examples of people who've used technology. So, Pastor Bruce Wall, we're honoring with the Pioneer Award. Because really, when I think about, as you talked about what you have been doing since the 80s, you are ahead of your time. So you definitely were like a pioneer in terms of being able to see the importance of tech and bring it to the community. We're also honoring uh, Dr. April Ennis. She's the MD, and what she does is she creates exciting STEM-based health education content for children in elementary school. She is an MD who wants to put children in the pipeline to become MDs or other aspects wow. or other professionals in the healthcare industry. Wow. So she provides education that su will support them in actually meeting those goals and expectations because they won't just be accessing education about health professions when they're 12th grade, they're getting it when they're 8 years old. So it becomes a part of them and it's easier for them to assimilate. And then we're um, honoring a young man named Richie Richet who is uh, a student at, at Jeremiah Burke who the organization feels is exemplary in tax. So those, those are the main components of it. We are also going to have uh, a question and answer period, mm. and we're going to have a panel discussion about tech. We want to teach the audience 
what kinds of technology education do you need? You know, it, it, nowadays the cold word is STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. We want to steer them in the right direction so that they can get adequate STEAM education which will support them in a tech career. Then we go to talk about finding a career in, in, in path to tech employment. What does that look like? And the future of tech. What is tech going to look like in the next 10, 15 years? Mm. And this is so important because people need to know what they need to do to prepare for this very different environment that we're going to be in. Well, hold on uh, one second. You have a, a caller. Uh, caller, go ahead. You're live on the air. Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Chief from Mattapan. Good morning, sir. And good morning. And I, I good was morning. Hey, how's it going, Andy? I was surprised to hear you on the radio this morning. It was a good thing. Talking about technology, that's what I was calling. You know, uh, uh, Andrea and I, we bump into each other every once in a while. Um, <laughs> a, a couple different places. We, you know, my wife works for the Timothy Smith uh, Centers. Oh. And so oh. We, we tend to bump, bump into each other uh, pretty regularly at these centers, and I see her encouraging so many people to learn more about computers and really get really grow as individuals by incorporating more technology into their lives so i mean uh just so much energy so i just want to uh recognize you andrea thank you for for doing that i'm always running into you and you're always um into such great stuff well thank you so, 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 so. Well, I have to say that his wife Leah is. So she's amazing. She's a, a tech whiz. Oh. No, no wonder when when I when I met Chief and and he started coming to the studio and we were um, talking, he seemed to have this insight, this knack for being able. Well, he could discuss a myriad of, of, of topics, but on the whole tech piece, he was really there. And what what cracks me up is that. If I'm correct, he has Roku TV, and he he actually will watch us on the big screen. Um, uh, Brother Lowe and Minister Priscilla say that they keep their big screen on all the time, and it's always on Boston Praise Radio and TV. So they get to hear in the background when they're working uh, all that's going on here. And Chief and, and Andrea, wouldn't it be great? I was thinking about going to... You go to one of these gyms, and yeah. they have five or six TVs, so you can watch ABC, NBC, yeah. CBS. Well, what would happen if they had a seventh TV, and it was Boston Praise Radio and TV? So for all the Christians in the house that yeah. want to watch something like that, that we become, we become their TV, their media of choice for them to watch whenever they're exercising. That would yeah, be I so exciting. Local area businesses should actually put a nice flyer together and circulate that because I'm sure that these gyms and all of these other businesses, you know, would love to be uh, to watch your shows like I do. Because what what it is is I get the um, notifications right. through my phone. Right. But I don't want to tie my phone up. I'm doing stuff through the day, so right. I just put on the uh, the TV, just like you put on a TV channel. Right something like that so it doesn't take up my phone right we're able to follow just like we're watching seven news or right. just like we're watching cnn right and it's actually more handy we know the people that we're seeing we trust the people that we and so it's much more better so if i was at a gym working just like we do at our office um i think if people knew that there was all of this local programming yeah. with all of these community leaders um industry insiders locals coming regularly i'm sure they would tune in it's been, and more and more TVs have these smart channels right. uh, nowadays, where right. they didn't before. And so I think um, with a marketing campaign, Pastor Walt, BPR TV would be seen on a lot more TV screens all throughout Boston. And I think people want and need real local content, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, absolutely. People don't really care about all of this sensational stuff as much if they can watch what's going on in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But not only that, it's like if you look at the... The, you know, the regular media, let's just call it the, the established media that you get on Channel 5 and whatever it is, everybody's white. So they don't, ever, they don't have another point of view. They don't have another understanding. 
that it's the same five stories over and over again. Right. Yeah. You have so much happening yeah. on one street, <laughs> let alone a whole city, country, state, and you're doing the same five stories over and yeah. over again. Yeah. It's, it's really it's poor service, really. I mean, there's so much going on in the city of Boston. Yeah. You know. And then you look at this mainstream media, it's just a really poor uh, performance, which is why I'm saying I think it's a tremendous void out there for real quality content, which is what you're doing um, when, you, when you're on the air, Pastor World, Boston Praise Radio and TV. So I think as more and more people get to know and realize that there's a real local option for media and news and content, I think they're going to start... Um, saving that Roku channel for BPRCB too. Well, well, can I s- share this with both of you? And I, I'm I'm very proud to, to to share this. So every once in a while, I go on the internet and I type in Boston Praise Radio and TV because I want to find out has anybody else stolen our signal and using it uh, to sell their to sell their um, ads and their their wares. And so I found a a channel. It's it says Boston Praise Radio and TV, and it's out of Ghana. And what they did is that they take all of our videos, and they put them in chronological order. So whenever we broadcast, they take it from YouTube, and that's that's cool. And they put it on their web page, and they're saying we're Boston Praise Radio and TV, and it says Ghana Media or something. And the the people in their country, obviously around the world, but in their country, they're marketing it to their country are watching our videos 24 it runs 24 7 without a doubt, without a doubt. It, and, and pastor well i mean it's not just africa it's not just west africa ghana is seen and understood pretty much universally as one of the strongholds you know of pan-africanist culture and thought throughout the world wow and so when we're thinking about pan-africanist thought it's really diaspora african diaspora hq Wow. Over there in Ghana, you know, wow. where they're actually calling folks all throughout the country. Hey, you can come on back. You can be repatriated. You can come here to Ghana. They're welcoming Africans, African diaspora, black wow. people from all over the world wow. to come to Ghana. So when they're reaching out to a place like Boston and seeing what their media, local media content is like, and when they're mirroring something like Boston Praise Radio and TV, it's wow. because they're interested in what the diaspora is going through in New England. Wow. And it's so important that they see healthy images of us in Boston, yes. of black people, because the images that even are produced by black people in Hollywood of black people, it just, for the most part, are just disturbing. Yes, yes. <laughs> I find most of it is just disturbing. And yeah, so yeah. they need to see healthy, exactly. intelligent black people who will not try to run a scam and try to become, you know, the empire builders of whatever, 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 but people who are seekingly seeking to live a rich and fulfilling life based on their own spiritual principles, beliefs, their own ways of being in tune with life. And exactly. And that yeah, thank is you this thing across the board on television. In the, I highly go to the movies. Uh, we just are, uh, and I, you know, one of the things I've always wanted to do, I don't have the time to do it, but I'm just putting it out there, is to do a comparative TV watching. Because I think people need to really look and see how black people are portrayed on TV and in the movies, and how white people are portrayed in TV and in the movies. Yeah. And even black people, when they make movies and stuff like that, they don't necessarily have our best interest at heart. <laughs> and that's the image that goes out globally. Yeah. So what these people in Ghana are doing is they're giving them a positive global image of people in America, black America. Yeah. Yeah. But w- normally, people globally get the fucking and jiving kind of uh, image of black people, 2019 version of it. So that's so important. I think also what I want to say about tech and what we're doing at Timothy Swift Network and why it's so important to me is we're giving people an opportunity. You know, a lot of jobs, we intend to do something about, well, let me just start again. There's such a loss of hope, I think, in our community. Mm. 
Not everybody's going to go to college. Not everybody has the means or the wherewithal to go to college. But you can learn coding. If you can learn to become a Microsoft certified professional, which could get you a job in a certain industry, there are things that you can learn to do to better your life in that particular way. It's not the only way that you want to better your life, but by having a job that can sustain you and your family hmm. is a way of uh, making life a bit better. And then you can go on the other steps, the ladder, your spirituality, the way you eat, the way you think, the exercising, all that stuff adds to a full, rich life. But if you don't have money, if you don't have a job, yeah. you don't have career yeah. aspirations, you pretty much have no hope in this society. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we are trying to do is create those pathways to people to get that uh, information to get those skills so they can have some hope. You mentioned BNN a while back, and their uh, technology lab is outfitted by the Timothy Smith Network. Mm. So that this is so vitally important to the health of our community that because we live in a capitalistic society and we're all unfortunately dependent on this thing called money, people have to have a means to get it. Wow, wow, wow. I, but yeah. what we want to do, you know, some of the jobs that we're creating are quarry friendly. Yeah. So that people are, who are returning citizens, they have a place. Correct. And, and, and that's... And, and I, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead. No, Chief, go ahead. Well, well I think it's, um, it's just really... The whole market has kind of changed. And where before you might have been able to get a job in labor relatively easy because it's hard physical work and it's always needed and then you had very highly skilled jobs that required a lot of education. It's different now. Hmm. People need to understand it's totally, totally different now. And for those jobs that are readily available and easily passed out, those things come online now. Those are gigs. Those are little jobs that you get from the Internet, from your phone, and the whole economy has kind of moved there. So if you don't have access to these tools yeah. and you don't know how to uh, access it, you may not have access to the job market, you may, and really, access to technology is really becoming that new thing. It's like education, it's kind of dictating how much money you can make. Let me just tell you about one app I just downloaded about a week ago. This app, I think it's called Stringer. And what it does, I basically tell the app that I'm a photographer, I have a phone on my smartphone, and that I'm available. And what it does every single day as news reports come out, just yesterday there was a water main break or something downtown. They say, go down there, take a picture and video. We'll pay you 50 bucks. Right. This is just, I mean, I, all I had to do was go down to um, South, South Station, take a picture of a water main break and with some video and upload it and I would have had $50. Did you do it? And then there's just, I didn't. There was another one too. I would have made 90 that day because there was another one close to there for 40 uh, something else. This is but so funny, I, I wasn't Chief. chasing it today. So what I'm saying is, you know, whether you're working for Amazon and delivering yeah, or yeah. Grubhub or Foodler or yeah. Stringer, or yeah. this is where a lot of these smaller, more immediate jobs are. So people never, people could actually never have to be unemployed if they wanted. Chief. But they have to have access to technology. Chief, that's, that's funny because I have Stringer on my phone and Brother Low saw it, so he has it on his phone. <laughs> yeah, Brother Low is probably driving all over right, town. Right, right, right. So, uh, uh, Andrea, I'm getting all these communications at my house at 1 o'clock in the morning, 3 in the morning. There's a fire and Lynn is here. Here, would you go yeah. take the picture? Yeah. Uh, I've had it for at least three months now. I haven't gone to any scenes to take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hard up for that. You got a job, Pastor Wall. <laughs> what I want to know is how does Pastor Wall sleep? <laughs> How do you it? This man is on it. How many hours a night do you sleep? Can you imagine I, you show up at a fire at like two a.m. after taking pictures. I have a I, I have a cot here at the studio. I believe it. <laughs> let, 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 me, <laughs> let me also say this. You're gonna laugh at this. So I'm receiving in, on emails from radio brokers now. They're sending me. Um, all the radio stations around the country that are for sale, around the country, just not in Massachusetts. And they're asking me, do you want this one? Do you want that one? Do you want that one? And so I, 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 I didn't see any of them that I was attracted to. 
and I don't have contacts in a lot of these states to even hire somebody to, to manage it. But the fact that this the, the brokers are now coming after me says that I'm on their radar. That's number one. Oh, obviously. Right? So number two, two weeks ago, I received an email from a former broadcaster who was saying there are three radio stations in, Boston, in New England, and the owner of these stations would like you to put your programming on their stations, Right. So if you agree to sign a disclosure statement saying that you will not say the, what the name of the stations are, blah, 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 we'll, we'll negotiate with you. So they sent me all the information, and I saw one station that I was interested in. And it would, it would be, uh, you know, we would be on. It's a higher power. You can hear it all over the place. And I declined because they wanted, you're going to laugh when you hear this. This owner wanted me to spend money, wanted us to pay to put our programming on their network. They come to us, but they want us to pay them to put our programming on their network as though we don't have a program here, a network. Then, then I, I said, let me explain what we will do for you. You pay us and we'll bring our successful, our popular uh, programming and bring life back to your station. How do you like that? And I'll tell you, because honestly, what I was, I think one of the last shows I appeared on, I was on uh, Pastor Bruce Wall's, uh, not Pastor Bruce Wall, on uh, Pastor Hobbs' show, one of his shows. Healing Our Land? A couple, yeah, a couple times. And I mean, I was fielding calls from around the globe. Right. <laughs> it, it was like, really, here we are in this, this, this beautiful little room here but we're fielding calls from around the globe yeah. so you yeah you hold on to what you're doing you know I, I was remiss I wanted to say something more about the event um, that we're having next Saturday 2000 what was it February 23rd from 1 to 3 at Freedom House we're going to be honoring Black Achievements in Tech and it's a free event and we're going to be giving Pastor Bruce Wall an award we're also going to have food. You know, we, we, we're feeding our people. Nice little lunch. And we're going to have music by Paul White. Wow. Yeah. Do you, know, you know Paul White? Yes, I do. Isn't he amazing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's going to be a really nice event. And it's just to welcome the community and let them know that we're, we're part and we love and we want to participate in the growth and the success of our community. I, 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 I appreciate the fact, again, Chief, I was saying to Andrea, Andrea that we're slowly but surely getting on the radar of not just the people in the community, but we're on the radar of other media. We did a story on a shooting that happened across the street from my church, and NPR, I just found yeah. out that NPR now has a reporter who has an office on Dorchester Avenue to cover the to cover our community? Yeah, they would want to, right? I mean, <laughs> is that something? I think, I think Boston Praise is really showing up a lot of these media organizations, honestly. And with a lot of money that they circulate and all the people that they hire and all they do, it can make them look bad. If you're putting out comparable uh, media product to a huge organization that has all these resources, money, and people. I mean, come on, you know what I mean? How are you serving the city? This small organization is doing a better job with much less people and resources. That doesn't look good, whether you're a GBH or a Channel 7 or a 5 or whoever. Right, WTV. right, You right, know what I mean? Right, they right. all want to be able to claim uh, authority for local news. You know, they all want to be the local. But they have all these big money things to answer to right. where Pastor Wall is really answering to the community basically every single day. You know what I mean? There's just no way that their content's going to be as responsive. Uh, that, that's kind of how I see Well, it. that's exciting. They're going to keep on watching you, Pastor Wall. They're going to keep on learning and taking notes. Well, you know, one of the things I, 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 I can't do it because I don't have the time. I have to finish up a book and da 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 But, like, I would love to you to be able to broadcast on your shows and just teach. Like, teach English grammar. Hmm. Teach people how to write cursive because when you lose the ability to write cursive, yeah. you lose part of yourself. Because when you're writing cursive, the next thing you know, you're doodling. Yeah. The next thing you know, you're creating a drawing. So what they have done by taking cursive out of the school 
But what they've done by not teaching English grammar is that they are limiting people's ability to express themselves. Mm. So if they all they become are these little mechanical people following what you tell them to follow. But when you working with your hand, like you were talking about, um, oh, who was our favorite guy? Um, you know, yesterday when they were talking yes, about. Yes, I, I can't pull his name, but I, the, the, you know who the, I'm talking yeah, about—the yeah. iron worker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, working with your hand. It's so crucial, and they're trying to distract people from using their own hand. Right, T. Michael Thomas is Yeah, T. Name. Michael Thomas. Yeah. So I think that that would be great programming. It's like, you know what? We are expecting these schools to educate our kids, but we have tools in the community like your show. Mm-hmm. Where these kids can sit down and learn something, mm-hmm. really learn history, really learn how to read a book and comprehend what you're reading. Learn how to write cursive. I think that these, this is the potential of the kind of programming you're talking about as it grows and blossoms, that you can do online learning, and it doesn't have to be expensive, and it can be real, and it can be substantial learning. Because as what she's saying, when you look at the news, they were all the channels run the same five news stories right right every right. day and right. you're not learning much from them no, you're not learning much at all they they have hours and hours of the same five stories we don't know what's happening in any other part of the world besides this little piece here and maybe out in the midwest and the wall and blah 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 but nothing about geopolitics Wow. We are clueless about wow. geopolitics. Well, l- and absolutely no praise for the local people that are doing well and doing what we want them to, and absolutely no n- real news uh, about what's going on in the communities. And really, this is part of people ask me what I do at my office, Pastor Wall. You yes. know, because I was in the cannabis stuff, yeah. but I kind of stopped, slowed down for several years. They said, What are you doing over there? And what I really realized is I needed an office just to be able to interact with the world and use this technology. And once I, had right. the office, I said, wow, wow, this Wi-Fi is so powerful. We wow. can do all this work just by having a space and a nice connection. And so wow. by having my office and having the Wi-Fi, was able to constantly encourage people to come by and use that Wi-Fi, tap into these jobs, tap right. into these jobs, do this online research all day. Wow. So we're not wasting our time with the garbage media, but what we can is we can switch from the research we do to make ourselves better online yeah. to the local programming on Boston Praise, Praise Radio and TV to watch people that we know changing the community of, as we speak. Right. You see what I'm saying? And right. so then you kind of get, so then that's why I don't watch as much TV and stuff. I just try to stay ca- caught up with my community and all of the local media and all of the research that I have to continue to do to stay relevant in my field. Well, and so really I, I do research all day wow. long. Well, you know, trying to catch <laughs> I was in my car yesterday morning. We have a few minutes to, to go. I was in my car yesterday morning. I was dropping off a family member, and I was in Dedham. And I was listening to the BG Report and People Power with Priscilla, two hours of programming. And I, you know, and I, the fact that I can just pick it up on the Internet and just run it through the speakers in my car when I'm out of the range of the FM, it is just amazing to be able to drive from Boston uh, to Atlanta and to be able to listen to Boston Bridge Radio all the way down because you just switch it on to your phone. One of the last visions that I have, and then, Andrea, I want you to go back and just again tell those who just tuned in what's happening on Saturday of next week. Um, I, I, The vision that I have for this radio and TV ministry is that there was a man who started broadcasting in his city one half-hour program uh, per uh, for one day a week, it grew to a half hour program for seven days a week. And when he finished uh, his his uh, ten or twelve years doing this, he had employed one thousand people, and he had built a campus where they all went to work. Wow! And in my brain, in my brain, there's only three of us right now that are doing this: Pastor Hobbs, Renee, and myself. But I envision. Returning citizens coming here to work with, with no judgment. I, I see uh, mothers and fathers who are unemployed coming in and bringing their children and are setting up a little nursery here and they can do some editing work and phone call. There's just so much that needs to yeah. be done here. And I see us 
This church is huge. I have enough room to employ hundreds of people. Wow. And so that, that vision is there. And as more people come on and buy time and make donations, we're going to walk into the vision. And then the last thing for me is that I want us as a station, I want people to tune in to say, I'm getting hope from that station. That, that's the key thing. Even if it's bad news, we're still offering people hope so that they will not commit suicide. They will not give up. They will not decide to go and hurt somebody else because they tuned in and they heard something that and uplifted their lives. they know they're not alone. Lives. They know there's there others go. out there working on it and thinking about it and feeling for them. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. And that's what the power of media is. And the fact that we don't have access to the same media only through things like Boston, that's kind of... It's the same kind of the disparity in healthcare and the disparity in the, uh, oh, the court system. And we're seeing it with media and technology too, and it means we don't have access to the ability to communicate wow. with the rest of the world wow. and our locality the same way. So, wow. uh, Pastor Wall, I, I just want to thank you again. I'm going to have to go here. Thanks, Chief. Boston Press Radio and TV, really, everyone can see how it's just so supportive of everyone here, encouraging of everyone here, kind of to the best of us. So, I want to thank you. Uh, have a good one there, Andrea. Thank you. As well. It's good to hear you. Thank you. Thank good you. to hear you too. A Andrea, give the, tell the people okay. one more time before we go. Okay, sure. But I also want to direct you to our website, timothysmithnetwork.org. Okay. That's where you can learn more about the uh, the, the technology lab that we spot, where they are, and what services they offer. So timothysmithnetwork.org. Also on our Facebook page. We are sponsoring, throughout the month of February, we are sponsoring profiles of black uh, achievers in tech. So you can see their profiles are there. But next Saturday, February 23rd, from 1 to 3 p.m., in partnership with Freedom House, Timothy Swift Network is sponsoring a free Black History Month celebration honoring black achievers in technology. And we're going to be giving awards. One of the awards is going to Pastor Bruce Wall as a pioneer. Another one is going to Dr. April Innes as a pioneer. And another one to Richie Richet, a Rising Leaders Award. At this event, we're going to be having a question and answer uh, session to answer the community's questions about technology, how to get into the field, what kind of education to look for. So we're trying to be a guide to people into this technology uh, society. We're going to have lunch, a nice little lunch, and we're also going to have music by this fabulous musician, Paul White. And all of it's free, and it's given with love, and it's just going to be a really, really good time. And so we have an ad in the banner, so look out for our ad, and we really ask that you uh, come out and enjoy yourself and support what Timothy Swift Network and Freedom House are doing, but also support Pastor Wall because he has such a huge vision. Support Dr. Innes because she has a huge vision. And Richie, he's starting on his way. He's just a high schooler. And I can't emphasize enough the need to support people because in this society, we get beat down so often. You know, we need to support ourselves. We need to lift each other up. That's the way we have hope and that's the way we can continue moving on this path to a better community a better world wow well andrea thank you i'm glad we connected yesterday and we were able to make this happen so quickly i'm hoping that you'll be able to get on past the hobbs's broadcast and we'll be preparing some promos so we can begin to air it here on boston praise radio and tv we uh, we appreciate you Appreciate your work and, and your time, and God bless you, my friend. Well, thank you, Pastor Wall. I, I appreciate you. I honor you. And I just have to say quickly, listening to you today lets me know we were more than right when we <laughs> gave you that award. When you talk about what you were doing in 1986, you were ahead of the curve. Wow. You wow. were really ahead of the curve. Wow. And I honor that. And uh, our community is blessed and better because you're there doing the work you're doing, and I need that. Thank you. Thank you very you're much. You're welcome. Okay. So I will talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye, Boston. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> well, we're going to transition out of here.
You've been listening to WBPG LP 102.9 FM Radio. We're located at 670 Washington Street in Dorchester, Mass. Zip code 02124. Thank you for listening. We'll be back tomorrow morning starting at 2 a.m. to do it all over again. And on Sundays, we come on at 2 a.m. and we go for 16 hours just about all day on Sunday. So thank you for being a part of the Boston Praise Radio and TV family. Don't let me drown in my sorrow And don't let me stay at the bottom I feel like this hole is too deep to climb I've been looking for a way out But I settled for a piece Radio, of The voice of the church in New England The views and opinions expressed by the following paid program Are those of the program producers And they do not reflect the views and opinion Of Boston Praise Radio, its staff or management You can hear us on Audio Now Which is radio by phone just dial 712-770-7534. That's 712-770-7534. And you will hear us live on your telephone. Hi, this is Mike D. of the UA7 Gospel Countdown, Urban America's seven biggest current songs and more. Join us in fellowship.